Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. Hit show Dimension 20 has just started its latest season and we've spoken to creator Brennan Lee Mulligan about the rise of online role-playing. The rise of online shows depicting role-playing games such as Dungeons Dragons has exploded in the last few years. Dimension 20 is one such example that has gone from strength to strength since its debut in 2018. The latest season is out now and takes a cast of comedians on an 80s action movie themed adventure called Never Stop Blowing Up. It's hard not to draw comparisons with the name of the new season and the meteoric rise of the show over the last six years, especially as this marks a significant first for the show. Dimension 20 has developed its own homebrew rule set, riffing off of the popular tabletop role-playing game Kids on Bikes. I was excited to sit down with Dimension 20's chief architect, Brennan Lee Mulligan, just before the season finale of Never Stop Blowing Up went live this week, to discuss the new season and his other plans for the future. We'll just jump right in. Is Never Stop Blowing Up the most chaotic season of Dimension 20 so far? Until someone stabs a character with two national monuments at the same time, I'm going to have to say so. I mean, you definitely had perhaps the most unpredictable cast this time around. And you know, that was very intentional. We wanted to pick people that we knew were going to take full body swinging for the fences. Especially knowing that this was going to be a full board comedy season. There was a real joy in working with this cast who are beloved on Dropout, and who have an authority, a familiarity, and a comfort with action as a genre. And who we know are comfortable getting down and dirty in these very goofy spaces. I was just so delighted with each and every member of the cast and what they brought to the table. It's funny because I said that to Reka, in an interview earlier that day, and she was like, what, me? Chaotic? No. That is Reka's chaos right there. That, flying in the face of everything we've come to know and understand. We were all there in the seven, when you tried to brush a displacer beast. We were all there. We remember, so nice try. I guess this brings us to Jacob. Was this his first time playing? Was there much difference between the prep you had to do with him and everyone else? I'll do my due diligence here. Jacob has performed in an actual play before. He was a guest on the Rotating Heroes podcast by our very own Zach Oyama, which was delightful. But I believe this is his first time doing televised actual play. And, what a genius. What a truly brilliant performer. What I love about Jacob, too, was that he can go blow for blow with the best of them in terms of outrageous, zany, over-the-top stuff. But, what a heart. Dang was such a heartfelt character that I think gave an emotional heft and a grounded North Star to what the experience of this adventure was for the characters. That scene with Wolfman and and Dang is one of my favorite scenes in the season. As a brand new player, I feel like he never lost sight of the core character he was representing, which I think is just. I think he's brilliant. I have the utmost respect for Jacob. D, D and role-playing characters often reflect an aspect of the self. So, a lot of your most beloved characters are elderly, crackpot wizards. Why do you think that is? I can't wait to be old. I can't wait. It's the level of unhinged that you are allowed to be as an elderly person in your day-to-day -day life that I am hungry for. We did our wonderful UK and Ireland tour this last year. I had a moment where... I think there was a scene where the Baba Yaga from Never After and Plug from A Starstruck Odyssey were both crew members on Arthur Eggfort's spaceship. I realized, there is this archetype of the old, kooky, magical, unexplained phenomenon that I just love with my whole heart. I'm going to try to psychoanalyze myself here. I'll say I've spent a lot of my life, you know, I went to school for philosophy, there is an understanding that I feel in my bones, of a tipping point of knowledge where you go over the roller coaster and realize how impossible it would be to learn everything. There has to be an embrace of chaos. I still want to learn as much as I can. There's something about that that I really love. The old mentor, sage, wizard, which who's just like, who knows. It's wild. I was going to say.